a beautiful day in Stissacon, Switzerland. The colorful water of Lake Uri and Lake Lucerne, surrounded by the majestic Swiss Alps. Mix in several thousand spectators, the best cliff divers on earth, and we have the perfect recipe for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Today, it is stop number six. I'm Trace Worthington. We have David O.C. reporting on the water. David Colturi with us at the platform. The Wikipedia of cliff diving, Joey Zuber, <laughs> is sitting next to me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Joey, game on in Sissicon. Oh, game on it is. Okay, it's a six stop out of eight, and I'd like to say this is the tipping point of the season. A lot on the line in terms of series points and to see who will be crowned the champion and uh, the one who will hold that King Kai Kili trophy. So definitely been an exciting season so far and a, a number of series contenders, that's for sure. Thousands of fans packed in, only a town of 400 people. So eight total stops. The last one took place in Bosnia and Herzegovina off Stari Moss, the old bridge of Mostar, one of the traditional stops on the World Series. And here we are two weeks later for stop number six. Last time the World Series was held here at Sissicon was in 2018. Awesome to be back. Jessica McCauley, one of the top female divers, warming up behind the scenes. Joey, you mentioned it. Big pressure at this point. Yeah. For Definitely. those athletes needing valuable points, there's your leader, Catlin Preta of Romania, but this is the time to do it right now. That it is. I think all the athletes understand it's a crucial point in the season. They've got to perform. Rihanna Nifland on the screen, currently leading the World Series so far. One of the dominant figures in the cliff diving scene. Yeah, and Iflin now with four straight wins, places her in a comfortable lead. Carlson of Canada remains the consistent one, sits number two in the World Series points. Ellie Smart having the best season to date, still in the top three, McCauley in fourth, Panisi in fifth. Don't count out Mele Carpenter of the United States, who with one less event than all the rest of the athletes in sixth, the top wild card female diver at the moment. Molly Carlson, once a traditional diver, now transitioned into <laughs> cliff diving in only her second season on the World Series. She's one of the best. Here is 60 Seconds with the Canadian. My name is Molly Carlson. I'm from Canada and I'm 23 years old. My way into cliff diving was very unique. When I was about to retire after college, part of me thought, I want to keep going. And then I reached out to Team Canada and they said, you want to do high diving? Please join us. And from there, it was a very fast process. My debut in France was magical. After the first dive, everyone started looking at me like, who's this girl? Like, why is she good? And I kept going with the momentum of it. Next thing you know, I was on the podium next to my idol, Rihanna Nifflin. My rivalry has definitely escalated with Rihanna Nifflin since I started the season. Last season, there was some tension between us. This season, we're more challenging each other in a very competitive sport way. I'm so excited to push the limits with her. Joey, if there was a King Kong Healy trophy given out for the biggest smile on the World Series, <laughs> it would go to Molly Carlson oh, for sure. She's captain positive, always a smile on her face, even through times of adversity. She always pushes through that. If the dive doesn't go to plan, she comes out with a smile on her face and good on her. Look at the fans out here, motorboats, canoes, kayaks, you have kites, kite sailors, windsurfers, sailboats, everything that is buoyant and floatable, people are on. And look at that, so much fun to watch. Three rounds have been completed. Let's get you up to speed and check out highlights from the earlier rounds. Joey, what stands out? Uh, plenty of twists and turns with the leaderboard. So we're looking at Rihanna Nifland. So first after round one, also mixing things up a little bit, choosing to do a different dive in round one, the required dive, doing a triple half instead of her usual back double. But then the duel between Molly Carlson and Rihanna Nifland continues. And then Molly Carlson after round two sneaks ahead of Rihanna by just three points. I like this duel that they've got between them, as we heard from Molly herself. And then as we actually enter round three, we have a pretty interesting story with Rihanna Nifland choosing to do a new dive to step up the degree of difficulty. So Molly Carlson has chosen to do a new dive here in Sissicon, Switzerland as well. And Rhiannon says, OK, just wait on. I've got a new dive too. Great execution. Now this is Xanthia Panissi, wow. another Australian <laughs> superb entry. And where's she sitting? Number two. So it'll be the two Aussies going last in the fourth and final round, the two powerhouses. There's Molly Carlson making her way up to the top. 
Trail to the top, we'll talk about that in a minute. But for those new to Red Bull cliff diving, wondering how it all works, no stress, Joey and I have your back. Here's a snapshot explanation of the format. First off, eight men and eight women are permanent divers in this 2022 season. Four wildcard divers. Those seeking to earn full-time permanent positions are added at every stop, which brings the total to 24 athletes competing. Okay, okay, it's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. It's only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point, then it's the position in the air, and then you've got to get that entry just right. Scoring straightforward, five judges. They present a score between zero and 10. The low and the high scores are thrown out and the remaining three are multiplied by the degree of difficulty of the dive, which then equals a total score. So clearly the more flips and twists, the higher the degree of difficulty. In short, Joey and I will be calling it DD the entire show. Well done, Trace. Yeah. We'll explain. Yeah. Yeah. In every World Series stop, four dives make up the final score and points are awarded at each stop. Then those points are added together and they go towards the World Series standings. And all the athletes are chasing cliff diving's most prestigious accolade reserved for the winners of the overall title called the King, King Kai, Kai Kili Kili Trophy. Trophy. Awarded in honor of the great Hawaiian chief who launched feet first from the massive Hawaiian lava cliffs in the late 1700s. And hey, look, not much has changed with the way that the old <laughs> Hawaiian chief got to the platform or got to the rocks. I mean, they still have to go up to a trail. That's right. To send down a metal ladder for the women off the men's platform. And then there's the visual and that, the men. <laughs> and that's what it feels like for him. It's scary, trust me. 27 meters, 90 feet into Lake Uri. So the judges, you have Julian Linus of Spain. Sudo Lemechicon is with us from France. Marion Reif, the 2000 and 2004 Olympian. Jeff Arben, Anka Piper of Germany, is the head judge. So a quality, world-class field of judges sitting with us down below on the boat. Hopefully they can keep it together, not get seasick. Not many rough seas today, though. A flat cut. <laughs> Should <laughs> be fine. weather right here. As you can see, sunny weather. 23 degrees Celsius, 74 Fahrenheit. Everybody wants to know the water temperature. 22 Celsius, 71 Fahrenheit. So beautiful conditions for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Stop number six of eight here in Sisakon, Switzerland. So the start list looks like this. Anna Batter is out due to an injury earlier on in training. So it'll be 11 female athletes, divers competing in this fourth and final round. So it goes in reverse order of the lowest score to the highest. So Jessica McCauley will run number eight in this case. And then you get to the top tier athletes, the top four. It'll be Molly Carlson diving nine. Yana Netsiarava, Xanthia Panisi, and Rhiannon Nifflin. One and two so far after the third round. Joey, they went mm -hmm. one and two in Copenhagen on the podium. So That's be true. Some interesting to see if that unfolds again here in Sisikon. Xanthia took second there, so be pretty exciting. Beautiful shots. That's the place to be. Yeah. On the water, <laughs> in the dinghy. If you have to love it in a town of 400 people that thousands of fans have come out and just packed this town to come support the world's best cliff divers. Once again, only eight stops this season. So the yeah. small village of here at Sisakon, a big treat for them as they come out in full force to support. It's a party on water, people. That's the way to do it. Mateus Appenzoller, we'll see him. He's a huge yeah. fan favorite. A draw on card. The side. Yeah. <laughs> but again, 12, well, 11 women and 12, 12 men will kick it off with the women's fourth and final round. All, all four rounds, again, are added together. So everything is super important as we get ready for Amy Harrison of Canada. She just turned 28, and the women's platform is below the men's. It's 21 meters, 70 feet off the water. What's she have for a dive? High degree of difficulty. Okay, let's look at the screen, left-hand side, 4.4. That indicates how difficult the dive is. And you can see it's almost at the maximum, 4.5 being the current maximum in the sport of cliff diving currently. So she's really pushing the boundaries. And it's the highest degree of difficulty for the women in this final round. Here we go. Amy, so wow, yes. look at the degree of difficulty on that and absolutely 
drills the landing to open it up. Amy Harrison, the 28-year-old of Canada, kicks it off. She's got to be happy with that. She said she felt pretty jet-lagged coming into this competition, flying all the way from Canada. So you've got to deal with a lot of things, traveling, different conditions in terms of the weather and so forth. So it was a little bit cooler the days before. She's managed to get it all together. So watch this. This is the running approach. Why is she doing the running approach? And that is to help generate rotation. What's the arms? I'll throw it like a soccer ball. That helps initiate the rotation. You've got that light, heavy feeling. Bit of a bend in the knees there, you can see, Trey. So that's called a pike position. So they're still looking for form and execution. Judges judge it based upon are the legs straight, are the toes pointed, and of course the entry, but awaiting the scores for Amy Harrison. So you'll see the two that are faded out. Those are the scores that she'll toss, the high and the low. 70.40 on the last dive, 221.20 when you add all four together. Orlando Duque, our sport director, legend in the sport of cliff diving, always giving the athletes tips, but he's also here as our sport director, making things safe and sound, giving direction there as the athletes come out of the water. So right now, after Harrison's dive that puts her into fifth place, and you see all the ones in dark blue have not gone yet. But here's the walk to the platform up a trail. Again, you can see the men making their way up behind Xanthia Panisi. And now up next, was that Maria Paula Guterra? It was Maria Paula Guterra. Bailey Carpenter. Next to go, wild card diver, who's now been invited to compete in the rest of the World Series events. Why? Because she's been crushing it. Here we go. She went quick on that. Yes. Nice entry by Mele Carpenter, who has two podiums this season and climbing the ranks. And her first event in Boston, hitting the podium in third place. She's got the goods. Wow. Taking that swim, and this is the moment where you're, where you're looking for the result from the judges. For the sport of diving, you need a lot of power. We'll get into that topic later. Jumping as strong as she can. There's the twist, entering the pike position. For the sport of diving, you have to declare what dive you're doing to the judges before you do it so they know what they're looking for. And she was looking for a great entry, and she got that just right. Some good scores there. She'll keep two sevens and a six and a half. Again, getting the invite for the rest of the World Series in the 2022 season, just like a football player getting yep. shot and coming out and just throwing down a big touchdown, the first you know shot out of the gate. That's the way to do it. Coming off the bench and now a starting position on the World Series. So moves into the lead when you add all four together, 270.05 for the American Mele Carpenter. Also has her degree in chemistry and physiology, two bachelor's degrees, and one master's degree in education. There's Orlando. Once again, one of the legends of the sport. Now our sport director. Past sport directors include Nikki Stakovic, mm -hmm. Olympic champion Greg Luganis. So clearly, Joey, a role filled by icons of cliff diving. One of the most diving yeah. in general, yeah. One of the most experienced cliff divers on the planet. You name it, he's dove from it. And now our eyes are set for that incredible 21 meter platform. Now here's Maria, she was the one walking up the path. Exactly, <laughs> yellow bathing <laughs> Sorry about that, Maria. 22 years old in her 19th career World Series start. The first time ever competing here in Sisicon. Joey will touch on this momentarily, but it's uh, not easy for these athletes to get used to a new location in only about two days of training. So Maria Paula Quintero, her fourth and final dive. Into Lake Uri, she goes, Maria Paula Quintero. She's had a little bit of a slow start to the season, yeah. and that's kind of continuing, Joey, and this is the point of the season where we have to look at points. Currently ranked number nine in the World Series points with two eighths as the best, so she's not having 
a season like last season. Yeah. So what does she need to do at this point? I mean, you got to step on the gas. That you do. So I, mean, I actually quite like her takeoffs. I find her quite powerful and quite strong. But the main thing, the critical point, is you just got to get the icing yeah. of the cake right. You've got to finish the dives. You've got to get those entries to impress the judges. Yes, they still need to look at the takeoff and the flight, but the last thing they see is that entry. You've got to bring that splash down. So it's really important. But the challenges with cliff diving is the, is the visuals. It's not always easy to find that vertical line. It can be shade, it can be light, it can be choppy water. There are many factors that can affect you at the end of the dive. And we talk about, you know, fighting to get your permanent position back on the series, on the World Series. And that's what a lot of athletes are doing at this point, both on the women and men's side. But to even be here, invited to the Cliff Diving, Ripple Cliff Diving World Series is quite an honor as Rhiannon Iflin makes her way up the path. And you can see no easy way to get to the platform. I mean, there's no limousine ride to the top. No, no, lift, no, elevators, no elevator. No ski lifts, none of that stuff. To concrete, <laughs> concrete steps and bare feet. We're doing a lot of your thinking and visualizing, getting towards the platform. And visual, visualizing now is Ellie Smart of the United States, the 26-year-old who it's really, you know, come along this season, changed up her dives from last season. She's now doing the arm stand dive, Joey. Yep. And when I spoke to her about that, she really thinks, you know, that that was the turning point for her and in, in sort of the with the judges, right? Uh, and you can tell me more how that works, but with the judges and how that really makes an impact on your reputation as a diver. Yeah, she want to be known as a reputable diver and by doing these big degree of difficulty dives. And it's very difficult sometimes dealing with the different platforms. Sometimes they're more narrow, sometimes smaller and so forth fourth very difficult to get up in the, the handstand or the arm stand position at this particular location very 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 small platform much larger platform here yeah. in Sisicon allowing the athletes incidentally to do those running takeoffs yeah, Mostar, as well Mostar, that was the Mostar stop that you uh, the last stop of the series the Ellie Smart again ranked number three in the overall series points really tight between Smart and Jessica McCauley mm -hmm. Consistent top five finisher all season long. So Maley Carpenter, that's what you're, who you're looking at right there, standing next to Amy Harrison, but Maley closest to you is the leader with 270.05 points. Stepped away from the platform. Just like somebody would do in golf, right? If it's not feeling it, ready to drive the golf ball, not feeling it, step away, regain composure, think about it, and come back. Much bigger consequence than golf, Trace, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need to regain composure. Not unless I'm standing in front of you. Here we go, Ellie Smart. And Ellie Smart puts one down. She didn't have the best third round dive, Joey, so now she has a lot of making up to do. That's it. Now, in the sport of cliff diving, different directions will hold more degree of difficulty. So that arm stand dive that she did earlier on increases the, de the degree of difficulty. But Ellie Smart has been so consistent with the entries, having the season of her life so far. As we said earlier, she's starting to impress the judges. She means business in terms of getting the difficulty up there amongst the best cliff divers in the world. Superb entry. Very fast at the end of the dive, 71 kilometers per hour, tough impact, up to 10 G-forces. Tough sport indeed. Five judges, the high and the lower toss, in this case, the two sevens. So 83-6-0, so good job for Ellie Smart making it up. 284-9-0 will be the total after you add all four rounds of diving together. So now Ellie Smart of the United States in first. And you have Maylie Carpenter in second with a 270. Rihanna Nifflin in third. She hasn't even dove yet in the fourth round. Absolutely packed here. Lake Uri, a part of Lake Lucerne. A one-hour drive south of Zurich in the heart of Switzerland. Beautiful Swiss Alps surrounding this area. Gorgeous day for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Iris Schmidbauer, 27-year-old from Germany. Wild card diver returning to the scene. Two previous starts this season, eighth and tenth in Boston. Won the U.S. High Diving Challenge a month, a little over a month ago, Joey. Then backed it up with another victory at the European Championships. The question is, 
that she could keep, you know, get that role going here on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Big degree of difficulty, 4.3. Schmidt Bauer looked good from below the water, and the safety diver is always doing a nice job making sure things are safe and sound. The depth of this area, Joey, six meters, about 20 feet, which isn't that deep, but actually deeper than most of the locations. That it is, and many people ask me how deep do they go, and the answer is, well, depends how you land. <laughs> if you land well, you go deep. So usually you, you'll stop at about four or five meters or so, but obviously if you're over-rotating, landing on your back in the case where you're rotating backwards, you may not go as deep, but you've got to stay oh so tight on the entry. That's called the Barani, okay? So that's a trampoline maneuver. So in the sport of cliff diving, you've got to land feet first as opposed to head first like we see in the Olympic sport of diving. Good scores for yeah. Ida Schmidbau, continuing that confidence from that uh, that great performance at the European Championships. Not bad. Big hug by Ellie Spark, who's built a diving tower in Park City, Utah, where all the divers come out and train, including Iris. Where you live, Trace, by the way. 308, 35. So Schmidbauer moves in to the top spot. So perhaps getting it together and gaining some confidence after that European Championship. It is Schmidbauer getting past the 300 market, 308-35. Now, the score to beat. And she is six to go of 11. Let's go up to David Kulturi is with us, and he's with Xanthia Panisi up at the top. Dave. Here we go. Hey, Xanthia. So I love your story here. You came here in 2018 for some training, just hanging out, watching the competition. Since then, you've not only become a permanent series diver, but you found your stride. You're diving awesome. And and we were just talking about strategy. You said you've kind of switched your, your dive order around. And, and I just give us some insight as to, like, what is your pre-dive routine and, and how do you go about approaching these competitions now? Yeah, so it's really cool to be here actually competing because the last time I came, I was just kind of in awe of this whole competition. And that was my biggest dream. And yeah, now I'm here. It's so exciting. But yeah, so I've got a few more um, moments before my next, before my last dive. And my pre-comp uh, warm-up is just to kind of stay warm and relaxed. I get a little bit anxious, so I try to keep moving and keep stretching, um, but listen to like calming, kind of like chill music. Um, I don't want to be too hyped before my dive. So yeah, I just like to chill out. And I, I like watching everyone else's dives as well. It uh, kind of motivates me as well. Yeah, I love that. And do you have like simple cues before the dive, right before you step up? Yeah, I think I really try and use my breath to calm myself down and then, you know, give it all my all, give it my all to put in the dive. Amazing. Stay calm and go hit it. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Amazing. Sweet. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. All right, Dave Colturi hanging with us. He's out with a shoulder injury. Got surgery on his shoulder. Yep. Just like you, Joey. Yes, I, I know. I know how he feels. <laughs> part, yeah, of, part of the broken wing <laughs> club, as you yeah. like to say. Uh, but we appreciate having Mr. Colturi hang out with us and get some uh, sound bites at the top with the athletes before their dive. Awesome. So here is the youngest female diver on the start list. This is Elisa Cassetti of Italy. Made her debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series in Italy last season, where we're going next in Pognano Amare. So this is her third ever World Series start. You know, Joey, cool to see a few of these younger divers getting sprinkled into the events and get the experience. Experience is what she needs. Learning how to adapt to all the different conditions, different environments. Every single stop will have its own set of challenges. She'll need nines into the top spot over Iris Schmidbauer of 308-35. Cassetti, a little bit of a splash on that, Joey, and I'm going to go back to the basics with you as I always do every show. <laughs> Tell <laughs> me, what do you want diving, to know? Traditional diving, you have mm -hmm. the splash. A lot of people think it's all about that. Yeah. But it's not. It's a lot about the DD. It's a you know, degree of difficulty, about the form and everything. So the bigger splash might not always be 
something that inhibits your score. Yes, I mean, if you've had a particularly powerful takeoff, so the judges want to see a nice, strong takeoff, good elevation, the correct distance from the platform is important as well. Let's have a look, at the, look at the distance there. Relatively close to the platform, and you need to do that in order to maintain rotation. You don't want to move too, too far back, and the judges will deduct for that. But usually the last thing they see is, of course, the entry. So you want to be as vertical as possible. Try and draw down that splash, and they'll still judge the rest of the dive equally and fairly. And Alyssa Corsetti gaining some valuable experience here in Sisicon. And hoping to springboard into the next competition in her hometown in Italy. So it puts her in a third with 278. And just the fact that she ran number six in this group of women, the best female cliff divers in the world, is impressive. Pretty good. In itself. Very good. Very impressive. So five divers to go on the women's side. And that includes top seed after round three and World Series leader Rihanna Nifflin. First, we'll go to the two Canadians in Jessica McCauley, Molly Carlson coming up. Once again, welcome to stop number six of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Trace Worthington alongside Joey Zuber. On the platform, Jessica McCauley from Montreal, Canada. Fresh off the podium. Last stop, great podium rate right there. 24 starts, 11 podiums. She still hasn't reached the very top of the podium, though, Joey. There hasn't been that many winners in the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series for the women. Be amazing if she could do that. See the scuba divers, safety divers, splashing the water to help them see the surface. We can talk about that in more detail. No holding back on that one, Jessica McCauley. Absolutely crushing that entry there, Joey, from the layman's eye. And I tell you what, are you impressed with it? As I much am. As I am? Okay, good. I mean, that's the thing but, about these athletes. I mean, they just make it look so easy. Oh, like, right. oh, they walk in the park, just a back triple somersault at the pike position. But it takes years and years and years of training. So spotting aerial awareness is incredibly important. In fact, one of the most important parts about the sport of cliff diving. So watch her head here. She'll jump up and watch the head. It'll tilt back and it'll count. One, see the water there. And it'll tilt back again, just gently there. Two, and then she knows she needs to kick out just after that second somersault or when she sees the water for that second time. And we talked about the scuba divers splashing the surface. That helps them see the surface of the water. Trust me, it won't make it any softer <laughs> at all. Not at 71 kilometers per hour. So Macaulay will keep three sevens. 84 on that last dive. Once again, all four rounds are added together. It's a 290 to 6 0. Can't overtake Schmidbauer with that score. Need to be way above the 300 mark. So Ider Schmidbauer of Germany, wow, holding on to the top spot. And she must be happy with that. Again, gaining some confidence coming off that European championship. As we look at a spectacular overhead shot, thousands of people entering the area. What a season it's been, Joey. It's a little, it's kind of patchy. I mean, you have Rihanna Nifflin uh, obviously doing a great job with four straight yeah. wins, holding down the top spot. But the rest has been, uh, you know, it's been it's been wild. Yeah, it's kind of tip for tap, particularly between these two. Molly Carlson on the screen, so winning the first competition of the season. Putting a lot of pressure on Rihanna Nifflin, but Rihanna Nifflin says, just yeah. wait a second, <laughs> hold, quite yet. hold your horses. And went on to win every single competition this season. She's so mentally strong. She's got the perfect background with diving and trampolining. And that makes her a formidable cliff diver. It's rare that we see someone so talented. So, so far on the women's side, it is the land of Ifland that uh, hey. is what we're looking at here. And Dad Molly joke. Carlson, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are a few more in the, in the tank. Molly Carlson, though, remember 
Joey, 200 points for a win, and yeah. second place is 160. So this mm -hmm. season, Sisicon and then two more after this, far from over. Yes, it is. And as we said, this is a crucial point. Canadian fans. Yep, yep. They're always, Canadians are everywhere. That was they reckon? a nice boat, too. Canadians always have nice boats. Here we go. Fourth and final dive for Molly Carlson. She'll need a big score here. Eight to take the lead. Ahead of Schmidt Bauer. Oh, there you have it right there. Typical form by Molly Carlson, sitting number two in the World Series points. Needed a big dive and a big score. Will that do it, Joey? That was huge. Drilling the entry as well. The rip entry. Drawing it down. The disappearing act. Great look of relief on Molly Carlson's face. What we call an inward triple half. So she's rotating in towards the platform. That's when you stand backwards and rotate in towards the tower. But let me tell you, every single one of these athletes, Trace, feels fear. A lot of people say, oh, I mean, these guys and girls must have no fear. Mm -mm -mm. You always feel a little bit of nerves and tension. You understand the consequences. Sometimes things don't always go to plan. And you need that. You need those butterflies to keep you alert and keep you focused. But with the more training, the more relaxed you feel. But what matters right now is the scores from the judges to see if she can push ahead, which I do think she will. Wow. wow. Bunch of nines. And that will put her well into the top spot with 326.90. So Molly Carlson, clutch performance under pressure, doing exactly what she needed to do, knowing who's coming up shortly. That of Rihanna Niflin, but first Yana Natsirava and Xanthia Panisi. Great job, great comeback by Molly Carlson. So Carlson setting the tone now as we enter the top three seed after the third round. And the fans bathing in the sun, watching the world's best here at stop six of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Sisicon, Switzerland. A little cheese, a little chocolate, a little cliff diving in the gonna, area. I was yeah. going to say, yeah, don't forget your little lunch pack <laughs> and your little dinghy. These Swiss guys, they come out prepared, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, here's Yana Natsirava, one of the most experienced divers out here. Arguably the most experienced if you look at the field of divers. A place that she's competed before, that was 2018, when the women competed here for the first time. She placed fourth. You know, and at this point of the season, if you have a full-time spot and not a wild card spot like Ira Smith-Bauer, you might have a little bit, well, she's been actually doing a lot more, but like, yeah, you know, there's a lot more events in a row. There is. Back to back. It is. Fatigue setting in for a lot of top divers. Yep, two of, yep, two of fatigue. She hasn't been on the podium since Lebanon in 2019. Will this be the day? Right now, she's in a good position. She'll need some big scores. She can tip it over eight and a halves up to nines. She may get this. Natsirava, she'd been training so well, and in the first three rounds, Joey, to get into this third-seeded spot coming into the final round, and then just had a little bit of what there, under-rotation or over-rotation? Over-rotation, yeah, over-rotation in that particular case, that's diving terminology. So if we, if it's the opposite, let's say if you land a little bit on your chest, it's called going short. But I like the pike, could be a little bit deeper. And as you said, she's been training super well. She just bends at the waist there to pick up the speed a little bit to make the adjustment, but just stays a little uh. rounded. Again, reiterating, landing over. But this has been a very challenging season. So six stops already in the bag. And the athletes are really starting to feel the fatigue, particularly with that impact. It's hard on the legs, it's hard on the neck. 
It really does. A lot of the athletes are saying, look, I'm starting to feel tired physically and mentally. There's a lot of nerves that come with these competitions, and yeah. it does start to wear you down. She's currently number eight on the World Series overall points. So she needs this. I mean, she really needs a solid result yeah. here if she's going to get that permanent diver spot back for the 2023 season. So Netsirava, not bad, though, in third. The only problem now for her is she's on the bubble with Xanthia Panisi and Rhiannon Niflin coming up. So Xanthia Panisi makes her way down the ladder to the women's platform. And I tell you what, what a great job she did in that the last stop in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge. What a comeback. Yeah. I mean, she was not anywhere close after the first round of diving. Now, I commend her. She, you know, she took a little bit of a punt, took a risk, trying an arm stand dive without a platform straight from the bridge. That's pretty tricky. So she slipped up a bit. And that particular round one dive was in 12th. Worked her way up to 10th, 8th, and then finally 6th. Great fighting spirit. I love it. Yeah, it just goes to show you that, you know, when all four dives count, it is not over. Never. Even Even after the second round, if you're, like, sitting in 10th place. Yeah, and you just don't not know. Not over. No, you don't know what anyone else is going to do or how they're going to perform. But she's performed very, very well Currently so far. Then, Molly Carlson with 326.90. Xanthia Panisi is next from Brisbane, Australia. Where Joey Zuber lives, home of the 2032 Summer Olympic Games. Perhaps we'll see a little cliff diving or high diving in the games by then. I hope. That's our goal. That's our target. But right now, the target is getting a great rip entry for Xanti Panisi. Big degree of difficulty, 4.0. Look at that. It'll indicate what type of dive they're doing and how high the tariff is. Always keep an eye on that. The scores required for Xanti Panisi. To move into the lead would be eight and a half. Eight and a half that's yeah. a, that's a, she's got to hit it. Once again, the safety divers down below, they're just there to make a little splash for the visuals, as Joey mentioned, keeping things safe. Xanthia Panisi, the 23-year-old Australian. An ultimate diver in this round. She'll stand backwards. She's going to rotate in towards the platform, come relatively close. Keep an eye on this. Oh, looks so beautiful in the air and rips the entry there. And the current leader, Molly Carlson, who's guaranteed a podium, awaits to see which color medal that will be and what placing. Xanthi Panisi needing those eight and a half. Joey, do you think that did it with the judges? It's hard to tell from that yeah. angle, but I'm so impressed with her and how she's improved over the season, improving in her mental state, her confidence. She works incredibly hard on her strength training. Look at that pike position. A pike is when the legs are straight. Her head is right against her shins. Judges want to see that. Mm. From the side angle, remember the judges will always be sitting on the side angle. Just reminding everybody, we've only got one more diver to come. That will be Rihanna Niflan. But I'm extremely anxious to see how the scores will unfold. For Zanti Panisi. Judges didn't think it was bad, but did not get the eight and a halfs that we talked about required to pull into the number one spot. So Molly Carlson remains the leader, but Panisi guaranteed a podium. Second place right now at 325-40. She's still excited with that. Great job. Great job. Her first time competing at this location. So it is Carlson, 326. Panisi, 325.4. Schmidbauer now on the bubble. And you don't really want to be on the bubble when Rhiannon Nifflin is about to come out on the platform. Uh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just, just saying. saying. Yeah. Just saying. Like, chances are, if, like, if you're a betting man, you know. Yeah. Put it on Rhiannon Nifflin. So here she is. Rhiannon Nifflin. What do you got? New dive? The last time she was here, 
second place to Lizanne Richard, actually. Yep. In 2018, where the women made their debut in Sisicon. And that was here, and impressive, but one of the places that she has a second place and not a first place finish out of all the locations that she's gone. That's right, so she wants to break that record, no doubt. Okay. Her back triple, two twists. But Rihanna Nifland, as we know, she knows how to handle pressure. Coming to the fourth and final round so. here in Sisicon. And what a spectacle for the crowds here, floating in the water and on land. The only place she hasn't won before that she's already been in previous years. 31 years old, she turned two days ago, so happy birthday to Re. Mm -hmm. 32 podiums out of 34 starts. A 94% podium strike ratio, Jody, and 27 wins out of 34. So that's nearly an 80% winning ratio. And she just keeps getting better. She's improving her dives, increasing her degree of difficulty. Average for first, she needs six and a half. And for Rihanna Nifflin, looking at statistics, a walk in the park. But still, 21 meters, 70 feet off Lake Uri. She still has to get it done. Mm -hmm. So Rihanna oh. Nifflin sending it in Sisicon. That ought to do it. Amazing. The awesome Aussie putting it down once again. The finishing touches we expect from Rihanna Nifland. And she is oh so famous for entries just like that. It's the sound, it's the, the dynamic takeoff, the acrobatics, the entry. The whole it all checks all the boxes. It does. <laughs> tick and tick and yep. tick. Yeah. Wow. And Joey, Joey, she told us that she's super motivated right yeah. now to continue the winning streak and hopes to hoist that King Todd Keeley trophy in Sydney at the finale in her home country. Yeah, and this is the way to do it with diving like this. I mean, she's been actually saying that we caught up with her in Area 47. She said it's been a tough season physically. I mean, Mostar was a hard impact, lost her legs a little bit on entry. She's worked hard with her physiotherapist and made sure she got the right balance between strength training and rest and keeping her mind sharp. And one of her greatest attributes is being able to perform under pressure. It just looks like her mindset this season, so relaxed, even with the pressure that has been put on her by yeah. Molly Carlson. And look at that, she will toss an eight and a nine and a half, keep yeah. nines across the board. So once again, Ree is golden for the fifth time in a row this season. Trust me, she would have really felt the pressure in this competition. She knew that Molly Carlson's right behind her. It's tough. When you're the leader, if you're the underdog, sometimes it's easier. But when you're the leader, there's actually more pressure. There's more nerves, in my opinion. And uh, I do commend her for managing the competition stress. Great camaraderie amongst all the athletes here today. So if Lind with a 364-9-0. We'll take the win. And it's number five for the Aussie here in Sisicon, Switzerland. By 38 points over Molly Carlson, Xanthi Panisi. So the Aussie's on the podium again. Molly Carlson breaking up the sweep. Congrats to Iris Schmidbauer. Really nice job by her. Fourth place finish, the best for her this season on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And Netziarava continuing to be consistent yep. in that top five position. Joey, your thoughts on that, on the women's competition? I mean, it was outstanding, even with the fatigue that we talk about coming into stop number six. I mean, it's superb. And with each competition, they're gaining more experience developing their skills, we're seeing new dives. And speaking of new dives, actually, Rihanna Nifland has chosen to mix it up, step up her degree of difficulty. And she's with Dave O.C. down by the water, Dave. Re, you stepped it up today and the results paid off. Does that make it extra special? Yeah, you know it does. Like, I feel like coming into this competition, there was uh, a lot more uh, stress and pressure that I'd put on myself, you know. Um, it's getting closer and closer to the end of the series, and uh, I kind of challenged myself in a different way with a new dive and uh, changed my format up. So, um, yeah, I'm, 
obviously super excited that that paid off and uh, to finish on a dive like that, like um, I'm absolutely wrapped. <laughs> yeah, you needed six and a half and you more than cleared it. And then on top of that bucket list win here in SissyCon, your first ever time? Yeah, the first uh, first win here in SissyCon. Last time I think I was uh, second. Um, and, you know, there was a, a few people saying, you know, you haven't won in Switzerland. Is it is it a box that you want to tick? And uh, in the back of my mind, yeah, I, I was thinking it would be really cool, but I just wanted to, you know, put another good result on the board uh, for, for this year and, and really kind of enjoy this location because it's the first time we're diving off cliffs this year and uh, it's really special to be to be back in, in a natural location. And do you think you'll be able to wrap up the World Series title in Polignano just next week? Uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on, but, uh, you know, I, I guess that is, that's the goal. Like, going strong, wrap it up, and then, uh, I guess, enjoy Sydney a little bit more, but we'll see, we'll see. Thanks so much, and good luck next week. Thank you. Cheers. That was pure excellence from A to Z, first round to fourth round. Joey, you take it back. We only watched the fourth round, so yeah. now you get a preview of what she did earlier on. So she's totally changed up her dive list because she's chosen to do a new dive. So she did a new dive. Well, not a new dive, but mix it up. Did something different in round one, round two, intermediate dive. Did it in with triple half. But this is round three. This is her brand new dive. She's been working on this for around about a month or six weeks or so, but she just had to refine it and to perform it that well in competition for the first time is just remarkable. And here's a dive that she's done many, many, many times before. Back triple with two twists, her highest degree of difficulty dive. But she decided also to do this to uh, step it up because Molly Carlson chose to do a new dive as well. So Reese mixing it up for herself, but also she knows that uh, the other athletes are pushing the limits and she's got to keep up. So well done. Ring the bell. <laughs> So fitting for the area. Congratulations, Rhiannon Iflin. Ring that bell as loud as you want. So look at that. Well over the thousand mark. 1,000, 160 points. Expands her lead. Molly Carlson still in second. Ellie Smart tied now with Jessica McCauley. So that becomes a interesting battle between those two. And Xanthia Panisi still remains in fifth and Maley in sixth. So not much has changed except Rhianna Niflin now with only two events left, looking super solid. So, Joey, let's step away from the action and go behind the scenes to learn more about how these athletes best prepare for the initial launch from the platform. Give us the scoop in your methods of motion for this stop. We're going to talk about being powerful, being explosive, okay? You really need this in this sport. Now, if you want to be one of the best cliff divers in the world, having an explosive takeoff and fast movements in the air is imperative for success. But why is it so important? If the athletes want to be competitive, they need to maximize the number of somersaults and twists to increase the degree of difficulty. So the more powerful the takeoff, the more time there is in the air to complete the skills. Folks, remember this, strength plus speed equals power. This means the training is broken up into separate conditioning sessions. When it comes to speed training, one of the most common exercises is the vertical jump. And then another level to add is vertical jumps with light weights. But to really maximize their capacity to be powerful, it's important to include pure strength exercises with maximum effort. But it's not just the legs that require speed training. It's also vital to be able to move into the somersault positions quickly. And this means the abdominal muscles and the arms need to be quick. One of the best ways to improve this is with functional skills, such as standing somersaults in different directions. Now, by doing this repetitiously, the speed will be improved over time. Look, also another factor to consider is genetics. Some people are born with fast switch muscles, meaning some people are inherently more powerful by birth, so certain body types will be suited to certain sports. And as you can see, there are many training elements required to be an explosive athlete. Great stuff, Joey. And I, I imagine you need a three-second free fall, 85 kilometers per hour, 53 miles per hour is how fast the divers are dropping. 10 Gs of physical force, three times the height of a traditional 10-meter platform and going in feet first. To the men's platform, 27 meters, 90 feet off the water on a beautiful day. 
for stop number six of eight, Sisikon, Switzerland. Now, things are getting more and more interesting on the men's overall series standings. Catalan Breda, consistency puts him in the number one spot with 760. Gary Hunt in second, only 80 points behind. Heslop, third place. The big story, Konstantin Popovich, winner of the last stop, climbing the ranks, out due to injury, sustained two days ago. And Joey, in addition, Alessandro De Rose, he's out with an in uh, injury. So it will be interesting to see how things shake out today. And that is Popovich right there. What happened? Konstantin Popovich suffering a bit of an injury. And uh, of course, it's a bit of a shame not to have him as part of the series because he's really one of the front runners, a very impressive athlete. Watching round one here, youngster Aiden Heslop, the front runner, leading after round one, drilling his entry. I've got to say this, uh, Aiden Heslop's looking really, yeah, really, really composed right now, really focused and diving extremely well at this particular tour stop. Just 20 years of age, so impressive. Ah, there he is. <laughs> and then Gary Hunt. Yeah, yeah, just never, ever leave him out. No, never. <laughs> I mean, after round two, I mean, a lot of the divers were just shaking their head and just disbelief. Just I going, know. I mean, <laughs> they just looked at him and they said, like, how do you do this? I this mean, like, 90th, how do you just dive it's, it's, that well every it, single time? It's his 90th start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Still going at it strong. Yeah. The most starts of any. He's never missed a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series start as we get ready for the men. 12 on the start list. A reminder, all four dives, all four rounds count. This is the fourth and final <laughs> rounds. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trace, we just need to be there, right? Look I know, at that. Look at that. We we'll just need to be out in uh, the water. I love the booth, though. The booth is nice. So here is the start list. Jean-David Duval. JD just got a, uh, the call two days ago to start in replace of Konstantin Popovich. He will kick things off. So again, the lowest scores from the previous rounds will run first. Going up to the top scores will run last. So Catlin Pereira of Romania, he'll run number eight. Once again, he leads the World Series standings. Jonathan Pereira is doing a nice job today with that 254-60 coming into the fourth round. And Nikita Fedotov, Fedotov now with Dorose out, and you have Popovich out, this is his day to shine. And he can move up in the points if he does well. But the big story, besides Gary Hunt and Aiden Heslop doing their thing, James Lichtenstein of the United States, right. wild card diver in his second appearance on the World Series, number three coming in to round number four. Could you imagine your second performance, you get on the platform and you're thinking, whoa, I'm with the front runners. Well, how about this guy? Yeah, right here. His debut, Jean-David Duval, JD. Like get a call a couple days ago. Hey, Popovich, <laughs> is, he was there spectating. Yeah, training actually to get a little bit of training yeah. in. We'll get into that in a second. Let's watch the dive. Yeah. JD Duvall coming in hot right there. Kicking things off for the men once again, dropping 27 meters, 90 feet. And Joey, it is not easy. The sport is not easy. And when you no. look at somebody who's making their debut, no. great dive, great job just getting out here and staying focused. But what would be going through your mind? Uh, nerves and fear. <laughs> so actually, JD was here. So the great thing about the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, they give some opportunities to up and coming athletes to train during the warm up sessions. And so he was here training. You know, just getting used to the environment, getting some practice in, and then of course there's some injuries in the competition. And they walked up to him and they just said, uh, "Hey, you want a shot?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> but in front of the local crowd as well. I mean, what a when, what a memory this will be for him. When asked to describe himself in three words, he said, "Full send only." <laughs> Those are the three words he used. <laughs> that was a full send right there. <laughs> full send to a 220.20 score is J.D. Duval. Loving it. Just training here two days ago and now on the biggest stage in cliff diving. Love the smile, huh? Soak up the atmosphere, son. It's a great day. Once again, live from Sisicon, Switzerland, Trace Worthington, Joey Zuber, Dave O.C. down by the water, legendary diver David Colturi up at the top for us. But here's Matt Cooper of the United States, 33 years old from Austin, Texas. We talked to him yesterday, Joey, had a great combo with him. Said he had that one appearance last season. He got the invite just like we saw JD, like two days or the day of because of uh, an injury. He got an invite there, but he feels like this is his first competition. That's his wife, Jeannie Von Kotrick, who is out because of a shoulder injury. She had a start here. 
11 wild card divers, a record of any World Series stop in the history. Degree of difficulty on that, excuse me, Joey. And we'll see if he's all right. He was came down pretty short on that one. So he was performing a front five somersaults in the pike position. Fellow American Steve LeBou performs this dive as well. So he's landed short of vertical, taking a pretty hard hit. This is why you have the safety yep. divers. And a good time to say thank you and huge props to the safety divers. Yeah, exactly. But. I mean, it just takes a split second, so aerial awareness is key in this sport. If you come out just a tiny bit too early in the dive or a tiny bit too late, I mean, this is part of the sport sometimes. These things do happen. And this is why we have a team of experts there on standby. Matt Cooper's a great diver. I'm sure he'll come back from this, but uh, it's really important that he gets checked out right now. Thousands on hand here in Sissicon, Switzerland to watch this fourth round of diving. So getting back to aerial awareness, so these athletes spend a lot of time in the lower heights trace, making sure they practice the somersaults and twists. So usually the first 10 to 12 meters is where a lot of the complicated skills and maneuvers are done. So they spend a lot of time practicing that, but then applying the skill and then adding that Barani, the last part of the dive, is not easy once you're at 27 meters. I mean, psychologically, there's a lot of nerves. It's very difficult. So he did do this dive already in training, and he did it at Area 47, and it went well. But a slight miscalculation in this circumstance. Bit of a shame for Matthew Cooper. So you have Orlando Duque, the World Series Sport Director, checking to see how Matt Cooper is. And, you know, Joey, you and I, have been doing this a long time, and that one of the top three questions that we both get, do people get injured doing this? Do people land on their stomach or do they land on their back? Because so many divers, like Randon Nifland and the top divers like Gary Hunt, just make it look so easy. Yeah. And yes, it can happen. And look, it has happened to the best of them. I mean, Gary Hunt's taken some really hard hits. Same with Orlando Duque. So the legends of the sport have had some hard landings as well. It's you have part well. of a, yep. <laughs> I mean, oh, yep. Definitely had a competition in Italy, over-rotated badly, you know, and suffered a neck injury, and it took a while to recover from that. But like in many sports, whether it's rugby, cycling, whatever it may be, from time to time, these things do happen. So his wife, Jeannie, clearly concerned, as expected, and she will get a lift. Go see her husband, Matt Cooper, who is getting attended to by the medical staff. Protocol, procedure. Yep. As you mentioned, Joey, just like many sports out there, all the ones we watch. Hope for the best for Matt, though. That we do. I'm sure he'll come back strong, as did many of the other athletes. What's going on, Dave O.C., who's waterside with the report. What's going on, Dave? Orlando, tough to watch that happen. Can you talk us through what the process is in terms of safety here? Uh, well, you know, it, you know, this is unfortunately happens every now and then. This is a high-risk sport. We know what we're getting into. Uh, but, but it's the, the normal process. When I see that it's a bad landing like that, I just blow a whistle. Then the whole medical team responds. Scuba divers find a diver, immobilize him, and the boat already took him. Uh, most times, they just go into uh, testing and observation at the hospital. Uh, and we'll be getting updates regularly on what's going on. OK, we'll keep fingers crossed for him anyway. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Dave, and well put, Orlando. Just blows the whistle, gets on it. Yeah, I mean, these guys spend a lot of time rehearsing this, so they always come to the competitions yeah. before training, well before they go through all the different scenarios. Here's a guy who's had his share of landing on his stomach and back because he's been at it a long time. Here's 38-year-old Artem Selchenko. And in Sisakon, he won in 2009. That's back when the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series all began.
it was Artem Selchenko with an epic win. He still has 11 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series wins. That's the most of all time besides Gary Hunt. But look at this. Absolutely. One of the legends in the sport, an iconic figure, and also an iconic figure for the style of dives that he does. He's a blind entry specialist. And we'll get into more detail about that after his dive. Definitely one of the heavyweights in the cliff diving scene. So one of only four men in the history of the World Series to win the King Ka Keeley Trophy. And Joey, he, if anybody's going to go after Matt Cooper in that case, right, seeing that or hearing that, it's Artem Selchenko who's been in this position before, probably many times. So yeah, it's, maybe it's better to have an experienced guy go after somebody coming in like that. And it's a difficult one being the next diver. You actually have to try to block that out. You have to kind of say, OK, now it's time to concentrate on what I need to do. But it's not easy to push that aside. Artem Silchenko. The history of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series back to 2009 when it started, but the Red Bull Cliff Diving began, we'll talk about it in a moment, mm -hmm. 25 years ago in Switzerland. A lot of history in this area. So I'll explain this. Arm stand dive. Back arm stand, two and a half somersaults, two and a half twists, 5.3. With a blind entry. I'll explain this shortly. Zilchenko <laughs> comes in a little bit short, but you have to love that, what you call, Joey, a blind entry, and you can break that down, but the only arm stand dive in the fourth and final round. It's so impressive from 27 meters, 90 feet high. I love the expression on Artem's face. He goes, oh, okay, I know I didn't get it quite right. <laughs> But we will explain the we, blind we entry. Chuckle. We, we chuckle because he's such a character. Oh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Here's the twist. Now watch this part here. Come out of the twist right here. Quick glimpse of the water. Then he turns over. Right there, he's blind. He's trying to use peripheral vision to see the water. Wow. That's a scary point. What he's afraid of, let me tell you this, is over-rotating. If he washes over onto his stomach, that hits you right in the chest and knocks the wind out of you. And that has happened to him before. So he just played it a little bit safe, went short of vertical. Well, doing a nice job. Matthew Cooper of the United States not having a landing or an entry that he was hoping for. And rescue divers came in for him, and then Artem Silchenko had to go. Catalan Freda, beautiful day, Mr. Freda, the World Series leader, making his way to the top. He dives number eight. But right now, Matthias Oppenzeller, hometown diver, told us he was nervous about this moment, but super pumped to be diving in front of his fan, friends, family, local supporters listening to the crowd. Matthias Oppenzeller taking in that rich history when Red Bull cliff diving started in Switzerland 25 years ago and still embracing it, still carrying on the tradition. Yes, getting the crowd going. Could you imagine? Finished law school last fall at the University of Zurich. And now in a town with a population of 400, has thousands to come out and watch his competition dive. Ah, uh, skip law school, just do this, way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you get a, a reaction like that. <laughs> you might be thinking, hmm. He might, he hasn't. Full time he hasn't, diving. He hasn't done this since 2018 as far as in front of the hometown. Very similar reception as last time. Wild and rowdy crowd. That's what we love, is the heart rate getting up to 138 his beats per minute. His resting heart rate is 50. So currently now 142 and climbing. 
They test the divers beforehand, so the resting heart rate is 50. This max test was 185. This goes to show you whether you want to get pumped up, fired up, Joey, or just chill out. Here we go. Lots of spinning going on there by Matthias Appenzeller of Switzerland in front of the hometown, in the hometown, in front of the home fans. We'll see where that puts him. Huge roar. Pretty fit guy, too. He is. Looks like four as well, I have to say. <laughs> Bit of a Chris Hemsworth. There's been a lot of history cliff diving in Switzerland. There's a lot of smaller platforms ranging from six meters up to 24 meters where the athletes can train here. So 25 years ago, in 1997, they had the first Red Bull Cliff Diving competition, not the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, but the first competition in Brontalo from a waterfall, spectacular location. So deep rooted history of cliff diving in Switzerland indeed. An appropriate man to be showing skills off the platform here. So Oppenzeller. The lawyer breaking the laws of physics. Yeah, that's in front it. Front of thousands. Here you go. Get them all pumped up. Take it all in, Mateus. So it is Selchenko, Heslop, and Hunt, two and three. The dark blue have not even dove yet in the fourth and final round. So Oppenzeller was four to go of 12. Reverse order after the th first three rounds. The lowest scores went first. The highest scores in top seed run towards the last. Aiden Heslop is the top diver coming into this fourth round. So here's Oleksiy Prigorov. You spent some time with him last week, Joey, helping him out with a few things at Area 47. How's he doing? First time diving at this location. He struggled with some results you know, at the beginning of the season, but now he seems to be coming around a little bit. It's because of you? Yes, it's all me. <laughs> it's all my doing. I'll take all the credit. No, I mean, this guy's an Olympian. Three meter springboard synchronized diving, bronze medalist. I mean, he's got the skills, just needs a bit of fine tuning. So we're at Area 47. Just trying to get the entries right. He's got a massive dive here. Look at the Tara 5.4. Once again, that will denote what type of dive he's doing. Four somersaults, two and a half twist pike. Watch this, action packed from start to finish. Oh, Prigorov unleashes one, but maybe not the landing or the entry that he was looking for on this, Joey, but what? An outstanding performance in the air, high degree of difficulty. Just makes you dizzy watching it. It's so complicated. Yeah. But of course, we're cliff diving experts, but to most people, it just look like a dizzy mix of somersaults and twists, <laughs> all thrown and blurred together into the blender. But he's doing the running takeoff. Why is he doing the running takeoff? That will help him generate more speed, more power and rotation. Like we said before, power is imperative. There's the twist. He comes out the twist. He uses his ab muscles to try and pull in. It gets really heavy there. Sometimes you want to slip out on the dive. A lot of the divers will use a chamois. They really need to dry the legs to make sure they don't slip out in the middle of the dive. Sometimes that happens. A bit of a kabooming splash for Alexei Prigodov. Bit of a shame. <laughs> Prigorov, 35 years old of Ukraine. In the lead, 33-35, 55. Once again, five judges tossing out the high and the low, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. As Aiden Heslop, who will dive last, top seed coming into this fourth round, makes his way to the top. An outstanding diver, the youngest on the men's side. We are live from Sissikon, Switzerland for this sixth stop of eight of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And the newest member of the 10 club, Miguel Garcia, 16 men in the past, only in the World Series, have obtained a score of a 10 from the judges. Not easy to get, Joey. He did that in the first round in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge, really, you know, setting the tone. <laughs> 
putting all the rest of the athletes on notice, doing a great job there. Very confident starter. Brody Tate rotating in towards the platform. So Garcia and that, Joey, we talk about going forward or the reverse entry. You and I had that little debate. I'm like, well, what's, what's the difference and why is that a higher degree of difficulty than going forward and doing the same dive? So if you're doing a front four somersaults, for example, you'd have a degree of difficulty of 4.0. But by doing it inward, when you're standing backwards and rotating in towards the platform, which you'll see in the replay here, so you've got to stand backwards, but you've got to move backwards and then rotate in towards the platform. You've got to stay quite close to the platform. If you move too far back, you won't make the dive. So those takeoffs will have a higher degree of difficulty. Of course, if you do an arm stand dive, for example, you increase the degree of difficulty. There's also dives where it's called reverse. You might be facing forwards, jumping up, moving forwards, rotating backwards. Miguel Garcia, brave man indeed. Inward quad half, what are the scores? That's so fun to watch. He'll keep three sevens after he tosses out the high and the low. So 92-4-0, you see that in yellow. That was his fourth round dive. You add all four together, and Garcia moves into the top spot with 341-6-0. And as we get midway through the men's competition, Miguel Garcia. Let's go to the top with David Colturi. He's with Aiden Heslop before he hits the platform. All right, big dog. Here we go. I love that you saved this one for last. World's hardest dive, front quad, three and a half twists. How do you even build this thing? Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's like any dive, you do it step by step in the temperature diving pool. It's, it's, it's definitely a lot of mental work, this one. Um, even for me, I found this one super hard to, to visualize before I, before I did the dive. But, you know, the more you do it, the more build-ups you do. Um, it just becomes more and more natural, and that's, that's where I'm getting to now. Exactly. I love that, the mental side. So how, how do you conceptualize? Like, how do you envision this? Is it rotation by rotation? Uh, well, obviously, it starts with the twist, the same as, same as the dive itself. Um, it, it's how it looks. It's definitely hard to think of when I'm not doing the dive, but um, most of the time, it's, it's, it, I, I get there, you know. It's, it's never the same as the dive itself, but we can, we can get close enough with our visualizations. Amazing. I love it. You got this, buddy. Get out there and throw it down. Thanks, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, great stuff. Aiden Heslop, he will be diving last. He's 12th to go. Jonathan Perez is next. Wish David Colturi a speedy recovery, too. Mm -hmm. Mom, not to see him on the World Series diving. It was so much fun to watch, but having him here, we'll take it, Dave. Thousands of fans. You see to the right hand side that platform attached to the rocks and the cliff. Sometimes the athletes have to deal with these different light conditions. So there's a bit of a shadow casting mm. in front of the platform. And then you've got these light conditions, a lot of water glare coming off. Sometimes that can be challenging, having those different lighting scenarios and different colors and so forth. Jonathan Perez is using his fingers to direct the scuba divers. So some of them like the scuba divers in a certain position to help them see the surface of the water as well. Remember, they always use a water spray or Scuba divers will splash the water to help them see the surface. One of the best divers in the history of the sport, the 2017 of Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series winner. So is this a running takeoff, Joey? That it is. Just got to mark it out so you get the steps just right. And make sure you get your feet as close to the end of the platform as possible. Forward four somersaults, one half twist. You can move into the lead here with sevens, six and a halves. Perez, known as the Rip Master, the arms coming a little bit above the body, Joey. You're the expert on that, but that looked different in the terms of how the rest of the divers have been entering the water. Now, Perez, who's had a little bit of some mental challenges and mental blocks since the first stop last year, still continues to kind of work and chip away at that. Well, the interesting thing is in the previous tour stop, he just underplayed his dives a little bit and was landing short of vertical, so just running out of room. So you have to make an adjustment. So last time he was thinking, okay, I've just got to give it a little bit more power so I don't run out of room. 
But then sometimes what can happen is the opposite effect. You might overdo it. So just watch here closely. He's coming around for the Barani, keeping his eye on the water, and then he just feels like he's too fast. So you put the arms above the head, you feel like you're rotating too fast and that puts the air brakes on. But what does it mean in the context of the scores? Maximum four and a half from the judges. It's a penalty. So in the sport of cliff diving, you have to have your arms down by the side of your body or in front of your body. So if your arm goes above your shoulder, that's where the deduction comes in, technically speaking. He told me he wanted to spend the year really focusing on his diving and regaining his confidence, his degree of difficulty at some point, and increase that, not focused on results. And Johnny Paredes will think this one through a little bit after this event. Well, I commend him though. He's got his dives back. But we know he can get some great in, you know, entries. And next up is the World Series leader, Catalin Preda of Romania. Leading the World Series and his performance in Monster, I mean, talk about a clutch performance. In order for him to move ahead of Aiden Heslop and, take, and, and pull off the second place finish, he couldn't win the event, but to get into second, he needed, guess what, Joey? Tens across the board. And we were like, you and I were both like, well, there's no way. Well, I mean, you, well but then we actually just said, no, no, well, anything can happen. And anything then can happen. what has happened, <laughs> that happened. I couldn't believe it, though. Sensational. Unbelievable. A little dad joke there. Sensational? sensational? Oh, I like it. Yeah, no, I think yeah, I've used it before, but anyway, I just kept it in the bank just in case. So that was, that was a huge, <laughs> huge performance and so much fun to watch this man dive. And you, again, are looking at the number one ranked male diver on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. No, his name's not Gary Hunt. But Gary Hunt lurking in the wings. Watch out for Gary, always. But Catalan Peretta, that performance, putting him in a second place last week, and Hunt, pushing Hunt mm -hmm. to fourth off the podium is exactly what he needed to continue to pad his lead on the World Series. Choosing to stay consistent, so he had the same dives last year. And now this year, the same dives. That's helping with the consistency. So some of the divers are choosing to do new dives, but you've got to go through your learning curve. He's gone through his learning curve. Now he's perfecting it. Now he's mastering it. Here we go. Only need scores of five and a halves to push ahead. You're looking for eights or nines. Beats per minute, heart rate 147. It's going down. Oh, there you have it right there. Again, under pressure, it is Preta giving you a good and better understanding of why he is number one in the points at the moment. Cattle and Preta, silky smooth. What a technician. I mean, this guy is so proficient. We saw that clip about his power, how much detail he puts into his training. Look at the takeoff, full extension, great elevation. What an athlete, toes pointed, nice and deep in the pike, honing in on the water, 85 kilometers per hour, 10 G-forces of impact, 2.8 seconds in the air. There is not much time to get it all right. Great scores by Katz yeah, Preda. Yeah. Easy, easy for him to move into the lead with what he was after in terms of scores, but then does it in a big way with that 5.1 degree of difficulty. 132.60 for now, 395.60. A massive score for all four dives for Catalan Ferretta. Just a reminder though, when you see the winning dives at all the other stops, well above the 400 mark. So will that 395.60 hold? here at Sissicon, Switzerland. He is eight to go of 12. Now the top four seed after three rounds coming up. It'll be Nikita Fedotov. Looking at him right now. James Lichtenstein, the wild card diver of the United States, Gary Hunt, and then Aiden Heslop. So Fedotov, Fedotov, excuse me, having excellent season brewing. Found the podium this season, placing third in Copenhagen. Has landed three sixth place finishes. And appears to be entering his prime. What's the piece of the puzzle missing for him to get in that top three more consistent, Joey? Just, I would say, just getting a little bit more consistent on his entries. He's got a good degree of difficulty. He's got a fantastic style. 
just more experience. And as you gain experience, you can fine tune the skills. Very unique dive here, reverse. Triple somersault with three twists. Vinatov, a big splash on that, Joey. As you mentioned, always heavy on the landing, and he could use this event once again. Alessandro De Rose sits number five in points. Nikita Fedotov, six. So if you're gonna make a move and a pass, today at this event is the day because De Rose will be back in Italy in four floors next week. Yeah, in front of his home crowd. What I love about Nikita Fedotov is he chooses to do dives that no one else is doing. Actually, a lot of the other athletes say, no way. I would not do that dive. Forget it. They choose something else. For some reason, that suits him. But if he did that dive rotating backwards, the degree of difficulty would be a lot less. So it's very hard when you're standing forwards, moving forwards, and then rotating backwards. Commendable, but a little disappointing on the entry. But still, we salute him for his bravery. He's a fine athlete. So 89.25 on that fourth and final dive. Not exactly what he wanted or needed to get those valuable points, but nevertheless, he's in second with 3.52. He's 73 points behind Alessandro De Rose, who once again withdrew due to injury. Let's go. Gary Hunt, <laughs> little Yoda-looking guy coming up. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Luke. Actually, no, a little Rocky Balboa action. Go, there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. Hold yeah. On. Star Wars Rocky. We'll right. go. Yeah, Rocky. Let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gary Hunt making it his way up. He will dive after James Lichtenstein. And how about this guy? Gets a start in Mostar Bosnia Herzegovina. That was his debut. Right. Freaking out there, but he yeah. did well in the results. Finishing 10th, and then got the invite for here in Sisakon, Switzerland, a few days ago after the withdrawal of Alessandro De Rose. He told Dave O.C that he got an adrenaline rush similar to actually diving when he got the phone call to dive in Sisticon. 27-year-old James Lichtenstein from the United States. Last wild card in our record wild card event of 11 total wild card divers here in Sisticon. What do you got, Joey? Check this out. Ladies and gents, can you count the dive? Not one somersault, not two, not three, not four, but five oh. somersaults. The only guy performing this dive is a trampolinist. Fantastic aerial awareness. We are set. If he gets eight and a halves, move into the lead. James Lichtenstein. Was that five? That was five. Oh it did. Can you count it? Yeah, the ground the ground <laughs> Getting that done in three seconds, falling 85 kilometers per hour, 53 miles per hour. It is James Lichtenstein who is showing up as a wild card diver and putting pressure on the biggest names. Blasting out the back quint. Quint meaning back five somersault. James Lichtenstein is here to impress the judges. It's powerful. He's counting the somersaults for the second time. Head goes back third. He'll see it for the fourth time. And now he knows he needs to kick out. And right there, as soon as you see the water, there is just almost no time to adjust. It comes up so quick with those particular dives. Whoa. He crushes the entry. Here we go. Wow, big degree of difficulty. And he's got some great scores across the board. He'll drop an eight and a half and an eight, but he'll keep three of them. And James Lichtenstein, with two divers remaining, goes into the lead with a grand total of 127.20, impressing the judges 396.6. So it is Lichtenstein guaranteed a podium, the first of his career in the second event of his career on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Just one point ahead of Catalan Prater. Could you imagine that? Catalan Prater must be like, ah, shucks. But anyway, it's his time to shine the wild card. And as you said, just his second appearance. Sign of appreciation from Catalan Prater there. 
hugs all around. He got the invite here last week. It's like one of those kickers in football who gets the call. Hey, you want to come in and play in the NFL? We have two kickers down. You're going to come in. And the guy's like, well, I'll leave the office and come down. And, and he took the punch. And, and he took, exactly. <laughs> he took the punch off. <laughs> and, 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 and hits and nails the winning field goal. But guess who is next? A formidable. I mean, you, can just, you, can just, you can just tell who it is. I mean, just from the silhouette there. This is Gary Hunt. And this is his 90th start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He's the nine-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Do I need say more? No, that's it. We're done. That's it. <laughs> no, he's a trailblazer. Performed many dives for the first time. He's never missed a beat. Competed in every single competition. Taking a deep breath, clapping the hands, trying to loosen up, get ready. Here we go. Signature dive. Seven halves from the judges. There. Means he'll take the lead. One diver after Hunt, and that is Aiden Heslop. And Gary Hunt, I mean, no words. The cliff diving genius. It's unbelievable. The master himself. Everyone nodding, saying, yep, yep. Gary Hunt. <laughs> I mean, what is going to slow this guy down? 38 years old, never missed a start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. James Lichtenstein, the wild card diver, and his second appearance will await the score of Gary Hunt. He can't even believe he's here with the Masters. Could you imagine that? You idolize someone, you know, watching the cliff diving series for years and years, and then finally you participate in it, and you're standing next to one of the legends in the sport, Gary Hunt. And let me tell you, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. An yeah. absolute gentleman, but a very, very hardworking athlete. It didn't come easy for him. He's also competing in headfirst diving. And he would love to be able to compete in the Paris Olympics in synchronized diving. Look at his technique, look at his power. I mean, everything moves from one position so smoothly. Again, he makes it look so easy. The innovator, the genius, the gentleman, Gary Hunt. He said he's trying to qualify for the Summer Olympics, as you mentioned, Joey, which will be held in Paris 2024, competing in the 10-meter synchro. And there are the scores Gary Hunt needed. He will keep eight, eights across, three of them, four, 12, one, five. So getting above the 400 mark, a familiar position and a familiar score range for Gary Hunt and now moves into the top spot. So Gary Hunt with one diver remaining, 4-12-1-5. James Lichtenstein of the United States, the wild card diver in second. Catalan Fred of the World Series leader on the bubble in third. And here is the youngest diver on the series, who is the top seed coming into the fourth round. This is Aiden Heslov, won the first stop of the series in Boston. Struck the podium again in Oslo, followed by another third place in Mostar, a veteran-like season rolling for the youngster. His heart's got to be pounding now. We have the world's highest degree of difficulty dive. He's been looking good in this competition. You can hear their heart rate going through the loudspeaker, which is crazy. So he has on his left arm, that is what's monitoring his heart rate. Check that out. He's maxed it out. Oh. 6.2. Oh. Front four somersaults, three and a half twists. He's going to run backwards here to mark out the run up to make sure he gets exactly on the end of the platform. Such a dynamic dive. He gets sevens. He can go ahead of Gary, but there's a lot at stake. It's a huge dive. Wow! A dizzying dive.
ride from a dizzying height of 27 metres. All action, an incredible entry. The crowd goes wild. The other cliff divers know it. Aiden Heslop. What a little ripper. Wow, unbelievable. We say right now. <laughs> <laughs> Under huge pressure, and as I mentioned, Joey, he is diving like a veteran of the sport, and that veteran, Gary Hunt, is who he's up against, a guy that Aiden Hesloff has idolized since he was a little kid. I could just see his body language before the competition and during the competition. He just looked right, didn't he? Yeah. He's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the zone, I'm feeling it. But these dives are so fast, it's so easy to make just a small mistake. Aiden Hesloff, an incredibly talented diver. One of his real attributes is speed. No spring there. No spring Watch board this. there. Watch how fast he twists. He comes across, wraps the arms across the chest in real motion. It's like a zip line pulling in for the additional somersault. So most of the time, many of the athletes just do the dive with one less somersault. But now he's like, stuff it. I'll add another somersault and max it out. But Aiden Haslop, I'm sure he'll get some fantastic scores with this dive. Amazing. Thrilling. Excellent camaraderie by the other athletes. They know what he just did. And look at the scores coming in. So Aiden Heslop with a huge last round dive. Winning stop number one of the season. And now, folks, winning stop number six with scores like that. 452 flat. And Aiden Heslop takes the win in Sisicon. He rings the bell. And he tells everyone, I mean business. Just 20 years of age, he's barely hit his prime. Imagine that. And Aiden Heslop, that will help him in the overall points. Because he'll earn 200 of them today. But Gary Hunt, Wow, again, do not count out the master right there with 4-12, 1-5 in second. But James Lichtenstein, probably the biggest story of today, besides Aiden Heslop's win, the wild card diver in his second career appearance on the World Series with a third place finish. World Series leader, Preta in fourth. And that's all the way down to 12th place. And we hope all is well with Matt Cooper of the United States. And we're going to go down to David O.C., who's with Aiden Heslop. Dave, what a win. Aiden, to begin with, congratulations. Just off camera, you said, whew, that one was stressful. What was it that made it so stressful? You know, I've been in this position before, first going into the last round in Boston, and, and that was my first ever win. So to be in the same position again, I, I just had some anticipation about what could happen. And... Same thing happened again. You know, I couldn't be happier. That last dive, I knew it needed to be good, and I just hit it the way I know I can, so I'm so happy. And your second win now on the World Series, do you think this solidifies your position and kind of your credibility as a diver? Yeah, I definitely do. I think I, I wouldn't call a win a fluke in, in, this, in this competition nowadays, but to, to have a second one really puts my name in the books, I think. And how does that set you up for these last two stops? Are you feeling confident? You know, it's it's pretty tight along um, across the top with these other divers. So to get a win has really bumped me up there. Um, and I just got to dive the same way I did today in the next two competitions. You know you can do it. Congratulations and thanks so much. Thank you, man. Aiden Heslot. Sorry. From the UK, no flash in the pan. <laughs> Two wins this season. Ain't no fluke, Trey. <laughs> no. Ain't no fluke. <laughs> Just absolutely nailing it and today in Sisicon. On in Sisicon is Aiden Heslop and Joey in all four rounds. Consistency is key. And that's what it takes to be on the very top of the podium is to make sure that you're getting the first round all the way through the fourth, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and Heslop's really pushing it in terms of World Series points, right behind Catalan Preda now. But what a remarkable young man. He's got talent, he's got skill. Just a thrilling competition.
could just imagine how much pressure and how much nerves you would have for the final dive. We're heading back to round one here, required dives. It's all about simple and graceful dives. Doesn't look that simple though, does it? Yeah, a little rain. Especially when you do that. Yeah, a little rain yesterday too. Didn't make it easy. And that just shows the diversity yeah. of this kid. At 20 years old, the youngest in the field is able to manage those different conditions, the changes. And it's hard when it's cold as well. Your muscles aren't loose and limber. But today, the sun is out and it's shined brightly for this talented young man. We're heading back to the fourth and final round. Remember, it's all four dives count towards the final score, so you've got to get it right towards the end. Digging deep, holding on, and another win for Aiden Heslop. What a season it's been for the 20-year-old youngster. And a great way to celebrate the win. Ringing the bell here, the bell here in Sissicon. So as Joey mentioned, Aiden Heslop now in second place, getting closer. Catalan Preda now remains in the lead. So Gary Hunt drops to third. And Popovich, we hope he gets better and is back in action. He is in fourth now. Takita Fedotov in fifth. So you look on all the way down to eighth. You have Johnny Paredes. Alessandro De Rose out due to injury in this particular competition. We'll be back at our next stop in Pognano Amare his home country. So looking forward to seeing him there. And there you have it. What a competition. James Lichtenstein with that third place finish today. Yeah. Bumps him up into the ranks in at 12. <laughs> All right. Let's go check in with Dave and Catalan Pereira, our World Series leader. Cat. We're nearly there. Two more events. You're just managing to hold on to that lead. What's going to happen over the next few stops? Well, Dave, yeah, uh, bit of a more bitter one here today in Sisikon. Didn't quite find my uh, my A game for some reason. I finished on a on a higher note, on a better note, which I'm happy with. Um, glad to hear that I'm still leading in the series. However, the the gap is is closing down, is is tightening. Really, really need to deliver at this stage in the in the season and. Uh, with two more stops to go, really got to gotta bring the focus where it needs to be. Missed, missed the podium today slightly, however, it's it's all about winning and uh, got to bring the winning game, otherwise uh, you're going to lose the train. So, yeah, got to learn what's to learn from, from this one here and uh, and move on with the chin up and uh, eyes focused on, on the end goal. No doubt you've got it in you. Thank you so much and good luck with you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Rihanna Nifflin and Molly Carlson kind of running away on the women's side, but it is wide open oh, on the yeah. men's side right now, Joy. Oh, it is going yeah. to be intense the next two stops. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the you know the front runners, nothing in it. It's anyone's game for the last two competitions, let me tell you. Yeah. That's what you want. You want it to come down to the wide yeah. last stop in Sydney. And in fact, we are getting close to that season finale taking place in Sydney, Australia, Joey. But first the World Series heads to a diver favorite location. That of Pognano Amare, Italy, mainly because of the ice cream. <laughs> but the diving is even more amazing. You know, this place known as the European home to cliff diving, where the houses literally rise from the rocks. The divers launching from the balcony of a private residence into the beautiful Adriatic Sea in front of thousands of locals and tourists. It is a phenomenal event, the penultimate stop of the World Series. And a lot at stake, as we mentioned, in terms of the overall World Series points, especially on the men's side, as we get closer to awarding the 2022 King Ka Keeley Trophy. So Pognano Mare, Italy. It all goes down live on Sunday, September 18th. For more info and details, keep up with RedBullCliffDiving.com. Looking forward to that place. Absolutely. Everyone loves Pognano Mare. Yeah. But what a day and what an event. The sixth of eight stops on the World Series. And that'll be a wrap, Joey, for today's coverage of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Sisicon, Switzerland. Congratulations once again to Rhiannon Iflin and Aiden Heslop for taking the victory. Looking forward to seeing you again at the next stop from Italy. Until then, on behalf of Joey Zuber, Dave Colturi, Dave O.C., and our entire production team, I'm Trace Worthington. Thanks for watching. See you later from Switzerland.